You guys are watching the Cowboys Report. Today's show is made possible by 8 Sleep. Get $200 off the pod cover by going to 8sleep.com slash chat sports. Say all about them and how they can improve your quality of sleep life later on in today's show. Today's show is taking a look at the Cowboys running back room, where things sit, and some of the top free agent targets at the position. The Cowboys' top two backs entering free agency are going to be free agents. It's Tony Pollard and Rico Dowdle, who may or may not end up back with the Cowboys organization. It leaves, as we will get into, the cheapest running back room under contract in the NFL. Four vet minimum guys. First, Tony Pollard. The numbers regress this year. You know, when you have 60 more carries and have two fewer yards, that's not good. Why did the efficiency fall? He gets some blame. Uh, could have finished off some runs better, some high-profile unfinishings he didn't do. That kind of makes sense. The, I thought the scheme was bad. Uh, I thought the run-blocking design was not very good. I thought the run-blocking execution was not very good. You upgrade your offensive line, Pollard's numbers are going to look so much better. They really are. But they didn't, he didn't perform well enough. And that will bring down his, his contract cost. And I am open to bringing back Pollard if he is cheap. I think this year was a good example of don't pay backs. They're too impacted by the supporting cast around them, not just for Dallas, but for several teams across the NFL. So what is the most that you would pay Tony Pollard on a per-year basis? Is it, is it $1 million? Do you not want him at all? Is it zero? Is it two or three? Would you go to five? I kind of don't, I'm not going to five. Sound off for me in the comments section right now. The Cowboys, Mike McCarthy, constantly said how much they liked Rico Dowdle and then didn't really give him the ball that often. He was actually a little bit more efficient uh, than Pollard and even some other backs out there, battled some injuries, which is always an issue for Dowdle. He's always going to have injury problems. So in the event you bring him back, you kind of have to operate under the assumption he ain't going to be healthy. So even if you re-sign Dowdle, it needs to be a cheap one-year deal with little to no guaranteed money in case he either doesn't play that great in the preseason or gets injured again. So your cap hits on your salary cap this year. Malik Davis, under a million dollars. Deuce Vaughn, under a million dollars. Hunter Lipke and Snoop Connor. Basically, the vet minimums. You're not paying more than a million or four million bucks for those four guys. And when you're in the top 51 rule, a couple of these guys don't even count. They're not in the top 51 highest paid players under contract. You are, however, paying Ezekiel Elliott six million dollars in dead money on the salary cap this year because that contract did not pan out very well. So, will the Cowboys sign even just one veteran free agent running back? Why for yes and for no? It is the pinned comment on today's video. If the ad comes here on YouTube, you should know the drill. Take advantage of it. Head down there and go vote. The top free agent targets at running back are pretty darn plentiful. The supply of backs greatly outweighs the demand even before potential players end up getting cut or released. Ignoring the guys already on, on your roster, right? The big names. 3D, but they're going to be very expensive. Saquon Barkley of the Giants, not going to get franchise tagged. Josh Jacobs of the Raiders, probably won't get tagged there because it'll be very expensive. And Derrick Henry, the exception to the rule of paying backs. You can go back the past four, five, six years, all the guys that got big money, only Henry made it through his contract without getting released, cut, or traded. Everybody else did not finish last one of those days, even McCaffrey got traded. Alvin Kamara's got a chance, but he's, the way that deal's structured, he's going to get cut at some point in the not-too-distant future, I suspect. All three guys can be your lead back. There were efficiency issues for all three of them. Their numbers didn't perform that great. And you're going to go, O-line wasn't great. Quarterback play was not great. And you're right. Again, ties into my don't pay backs theory too much because they're too dependent on the supporting cast around them relative to other positions. But Henry, although he's slowed down, he's not the five-yard per carry guys, he's still four-plus yards per carry and can handle a massive workload. Josh Jacobs has been a little bit streaky, but he can be a lead back. And you want explosive plays on the ground? That is Saquon Barkley. You'd have to spend a lot of money, though. I don't think, think, 
That is what the Cowboys want to do at this stage. Now, what I think we all want to do is sleep better. And today's show is made possible by Eight Sleep. I've actually always been a pretty solid sleeper. Uh, my wife has not. Thankfully, everything has gotten better with the Eight Sleep Pod 3 cover. It brings heating and cooling tech that keeps you comfortable and sleeping deeper for a better, more restful night. Did you know that sleep science shows in order to sleep our best, our body temperature has to drop in the early and middle part of sleep and then rise in the morning. The eight sleep pod cover will improve your sleep by automatically adjusting your bed's temperature based on your individual needs. The cover can be added to any bed, just like a fitted sheet is, and allows you and your partner to cool or warm your side of the bed by as low as 55 degrees and up to 110 degrees, which you probably don't need, but it has the technology. There's no better way to improve your day-to-day -day life than to invest in better sleep. And the easiest way to do that is with the 8 Sleep Pod 3. So go to 8sleep.com slash chat sports and get $200 off plus free shipping on the pod cover by 8 Sleep. Start the new year right and invest in the rest you deserve with the 8 Sleep Pod. Links in the comments section and the description of today's show. The next batch of running back targets, I'm going to call the up-and-comers. Guys that won't be as expensive, but were productive this past season. DeAndre Swift, injury concerns there, but was very good in Philadelphia. Devin Singletary surpassed Damian Pierce, had a very good year for Houston. Everyone loves Zach Moss as the well, sign that guy. Don't pay Jacobs. Don't pay Henry. Go with Zach Moss. He was really good uh, splitting time with Jonathan Taylor, which makes me wonder if he's going to command more than maybe we would like. And Gus Edwards. You want that battering ram back? The Gus bus can deliver that and have some better success in the red zone as well. All three guys' numbers were pretty solid. Between almost 800 to 1,000 yards in the case of DeAndre Swift, Singletary has shown he can handle some good workload stuff in a scheme that the, the running scheme I would love to take from Houston. It's the same as the Shanahan stuff. I'd love to take that. I digress. Uh, Swift's injury concerns are a factor there. Singletary, a bit of a one-year wonder. Uh, the Gus bus, you want to fix that red zone issue? There you go. Edward's actually very effective in that area. So name a free agent back that you want to sign. Sound off for me in the comments section right now. Next up are the buy lows, and I might be stretching James Conner a little bit, uh, but he's kind of working his way through another contract, which I guess, to be fair, wasn't the same money as the, as the Derrick Henry deal. He did make it all the way through as well, though. Shorter, not as much money, but still counts to a certain extent. His age might keep his number down a little bit. Two other guys, A.J. Dillon, not coming off a very good year, and J.K. Dobbins is the ultimate buy low. Former second-round pick who was not healthy at all and has battled injuries significantly. James Conner, by the way, under the radar, folks, maybe it's some good scheme stuff that I actually really like what the Cardinals have done on offense. I think that coordinator is an under-the-radar head coach candidate next year. Drew, uh, I think it's around Petzling. Uh, James Conner, his best year ever. In his age 28 season, first time he's ever been over five yards per carry, first time he got to 1,000 yards. A better version of Conner this year than what we've seen previously. Seems important. A.J. Dillon is not that good this year. Thick, powerful runner. Short yardage especially, but does not bring you big plays. J.K. Dobbins, when healthy, has been pretty good. The problem is, how do you trust him to stay healthy? You know, he missed so much time over the years. Played half a year, missed 2021. Played half a year in 2022. Played one game this year. He's good when healthy. Averaged six, almost six yards a carry, but he has only 234 in his career. Tough to figure that, that one out. Then there's the bargain bin guys. Antonio Gibson, actually pass protected pass catch a little bit, but fell out of favor in Washington. Deonta Foreman wasn't that involved in Chicago, was kind of RB3 and, and active a, a bunch of games, but was productive, went out there. Clyde the Glide, Edward Zolaire, uh, the Chiefs, and his teammate, Jarek McKinnon. Both probably won't be that expensive, offer some third down value. Outside of Foreman, these are all kind of mostly third down backs, and their numbers reflect that. Gibson was not very involved this past season. Uh, it'd be kind of funny to replace uh, 
one Memphis runner with another one, by the way. He had 1,000 yards in 2021, but he's always been around a four-yard per carry guy. Got to work on those fumbles, by the way. He had four this year in 65 carries. Bad. Foreman wasn't always loved by the Bears, but had some success and some you know, production for them. Edwards Alaire, uh, former first round pick, you know, that falls in the buy low category, obviously. And Jarek McKinnon offers you some third down juice. Also played under Mike Zimmer, by the way. So we'll see. Now we will have plenty of free agent and trade and draft videos for you. So if you haven't already, hit that sub button right now. You're not always going to like this list, but I'm grouping these guys in the washed dudes category. I think we have to have the he's kind of washed conversation for Austin Eckler. Or, or, or it's kind of more that bad. I yeah, I don't think so. The way we saw Pollard play previously. Uh, Eckler averaged 3.5 yards per carry on 180 touches or 179. He didn't look the same. He's almost 30 now. He's got a big, a big workload. It's a red flag. Kareem Hunt. Battled injury this year, but also, again, has been a not great productive runner. He averaged three yards per carry. Terrible. Cordero Patterson uh, has had a very, for a running back, has had a very long career. Uh, under th- 3.6, uh, I think, yards per carry this year. Not great. And yes, we'll put Ezekiel Elliott on here. I don't want to bring him back or to pay him $6 million in dead money, whatever. Uh, Elliott's workload was pretty high. It should raise some concerns that the Austin Eckler numbers and uh, Zeke numbers are damn near identical. That's not a good thing when you're averaging 3.4, 3.5 yards per carry. I don't need that. I can get 3.5 from Malik Davis, and they can help me on special teams. I'm not going to pay a premium from that. I'm not going to pay for the brand name when the brand has fallen off. So you might see these guys link. Patterson intrigues me the most because he offers you some good third downs. He's not going to demand big money, and he can do some receiver, like pure receiver stuff for you, but these guys are they're wash dudes for a reason. So would you bring back Zeke? You knew it was going to be on here. I know. I know what you guys want to talk about. S for sign, P for pass, pass for me. Sound off in the comments section. When it comes to the running back market in general, there is more supply than there is demand for backs. So you could win the deal for somebody. You might be able to say, hey, we're not going to pay you as much, but we'll make you the featured back on this team. And you can cash in next offseason. That's actually a pretty decent sale or sell for backs. Come build your value up. Go get more money next year. Don't have to split a a platoon and fall out of favor. And you might see some guys, by the way, wait until after the draft. What you don't want to do is sign with a team for a cheap one-year prove-it deal and have them draft somebody in the top 75 at the, at the spot and Dalvin Cook yourself to an extent, or, which is probably not the best example, but Cook was also like super watches here, didn't, didn't make the list. You might see some guys wait. So I think at some point, you should probably look at, the, uh, at, at a free agent back because the, the value and the supply make it actually kind of worthwhile. Just don't go crazy expensive. 